Right now. Roll call, please. Alderman Alder. And not can't hear you yet. Can you, said, oh. can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, thank you. And you see yeah. she's on tonight. Alderman Flores? Here. Alderman Galloway? Here. Alderman Hutchinson? Here. Alderman Owen is out sick. And Alderman Snyder? Here. We have five aldermen present. We have a quorum. Thank you. Um, and yes, Alderman Alder is recovering from COVID. And so, but glad you could join us tonight by Zoom. Um, as we look at the minutes, we'll first look at September the 18th, 2023, our regular session. We have received those. Were there any questions regarding the September 18th minutes as printed? I am not seeing anything. I'll entertain a motion. So. And a second. Okay. Okay, there's a motion that by Alderman Snyder, saying by Alderman Hutcherson, that we approve the September 18, 23 minutes. All in favor of this motion, do so by show of hands. And it carries. And this Alderman Alder, I will keep looking up. <laughs> Okay. Next, we have our non legislative session. That was September 21st, 2023. Are there any questions or comments regarding those set of minutes? If not, I entertain a motion that they be accepted them as printed. Okay. So moved. Okay. And seconded by, okay, Alden Snyder. Okay. <laughs> Okay, the motion is that we approve the minutes from the September 21st, 23 meeting. The motion was made by Alderman Flores. It was seconded by Alderman Snyder. All in favor, do so by show of hands. And it carries. Okay. Uh, tonight, there's no ceremonial matters or there's no scheduled visitor or guest. So we'll go to first reading of these bills and resolution, which also means they're open for public discussion. We're going to begin with bill number 3484. Your Honor, I move that we place bill number 3484 on its first reading by title and description only. Okay. And, okay. So, bill number 3484 uh, being presented on its first reading by title only. Motion was made by Alden Galloway, second by Alden Snyder. On favor of voting on this motion, discuss bill 3484. Do so by show of hands. And it carries. An ordinance authorizing the city to enter into a contract with Springfield Roofing Systems, LLC for roofing work on the Brick Street building. Okay. Um, comments, please, Director Sam. It was already on. Um, I am excited to say, and probably Cameron is too, although he's not having as much fun moving as he probably um, is, but this um, week we're starting to hope to get planning and zoning can move over to their Brick Street building. So we're looking at, and that's part of the staff, we're waiting on some desks and things, but that uh, renovation is almost complete and we are um, have started the process of the roof. We've talked about it several times in Alderman meetings, and you guys are all aware that it was. Um, Steve brought forward the budget amendments in, what was that, last week? I guess it was only last week. So those were approved in the budget amendments. So I'm bringing forward, we've went out to bid. We've picked the lowest bidder. Um, I am happy to say that it came in about 100,000 less than what we were expecting. So we've got some really good competitive bids. Uh, there were several bidders, which I think really helps the price with that. So um I'm happy to say that we'd like to bring forward the um, Springfield, let me see where their name is, Springfield um, Roofing for the bid. Any questions from our alderman? Yes, sir. I noticed there's quite a bit of a difference between yeah. 
the spread of numbers there. Was there any difference in product or anything like that? Or was so it a safe uh, worked service? with Co Cochrane Engineering and they were very confident in it. They were, um, when we opened the bid, he's like, man, I'm really happy Springfield bid this job. Um, I think they're going to do a great job and there would be no reason for him to question it. So he was, we were all kind of excited about it that it came in that way. Excellent. Anyone else? Alderman? No. I think Alderman Heather is not. Okay. Okay. Well, at this time, this is the first reading. We'll open to the public. Mm -hmm. Is anyone here who wants to speak in favor of Bill number 3484 from the audience? Or also anyone likewise opposed to Bill number 3484? Okay. Not seeing any. And Zoom wise, there's besides Alderman Alder, there's no. On Zoom. Okay. Thank you. Last comments from, from anyone from the board? Yeah. Not seeing any movement then. Uh, bill number 3484 be held over for a future meeting. Okay. Moving on. Well, we're going to move now to bill number 3485. Your Honor, I move that we place uh, Bill 3485 on its first reading by title and short description only. Okay. So uh, the motion is that Bill number 3485 be presented on first reading by title only. The motion was made by Alderman Flores and second by Alderman Snyder. All in favor of voting of this motion to discuss Bill number 3485, do so by show of hands. And yes, it carries. An ordinance authorizing the city to enter into an amended transportation development and cooperative agreement regarding the Ozark Center Transportation Development District and improvements to 19th Street. Okay, I believe our city minister is going to begin the conversation. Yes, yes sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, in 2003, you may recall the uh, Circuit Court of Christian County approved a transportation development district for the purposes of making transportation improvements to the Ozark Center. That's where Ozark uh, Walmart and Ozark's Lowe's is located, our shopping center out there. <clears throat> the purpose of that district was to apply a tax uh, in addition to the regular sales tax that would go to pay for the bond debt on those transportation improvements. Um, fast forward to uh, 2021, we're at such time the uh, board of directors decided that there were new projects that were necessary um, or new projects that they would like to add uh, to the uh, project list for the Transportation Development District to complete. Uh, the Transportation Development District approached the city uh, at the same time we were doing a Southern Transportation Study. It was an independent study in that area that we were looking at what possible improvements would we be making in the future in that area. Um, and what was determined was that in that area, there was an opportunity to join together and work with the Transportation Development District. So the city of Ozark had entered into an agreement with the Transportation Development District in 2022 to see the completion of those projects move forward. The funds that are now collected by the Transportation Development District are specifically put into different pots, if you will, um, for the purpose of completing those projects that were in the Southern Transportation Plan. The first of those projects are what we're dealing with here tonight. That's what we call 19th Street. Uh, most of you are familiar when you turn on the signal, which would be the easternmost signal, <clears throat> and you go down by the Murphy Oil and you go by uh, Lowe's. And if you were to continue to go, uh, it would dead end down there. Well, there's two very large pieces of property behind Lowe's and Walmart. Back there, there is a subdivision that is moving forward. We had entered into an agreement by where the transportation development district will be complete, where the developer uh, will be working with the transportation development district to improve and complete the improvements of 19th Street. <clears throat> the reason for that is that we anticipate both sides of the road to develop fully. And by working together with the developer, this will allow for us to split the cost of the roadway improvement, thus not removing any money from the city's budget. This is all coming from the special pots that are designated for these projects within the Transportation Development District. 
So there will be no money that comes from the general fund, street fund of the city of Ozark in addition to paying for this road. <clears throat> what this allows us to do is instead of having two engineers, two contractors, and building two roads at the same time, we wanted to allow for the developer to complete the roadway, simply being able to utilize that portion of the funds in the city's bucket, if you will. Um, so that's what this agreement does. Ms. Calloway probably has some other, if she may have some other technical information, I don't think so, but if you have any questions, certainly she can help me answer them. Okay. Any questions? <clears throat> now, Alderman Alder, are you hearing us okay, ma'am? Yes, thank you. Good, good. Yes. Okay, I'm not seeing, okay, this time, okay. Uh, this time, uh, we'll open up to the public. Is anyone here who is <clears throat> in favor regarding bill number 3485? Okay. Or opposed to bill number 3485? Okay. Not seeing a movement then. Um, now, I understand, do we have a, on this one, developer, we have Rob Preston, who wished to, by Zoom, speak to us. He's the developer for this project. Okay, is he ready, Miss Jennifer? If he can hear us, he can just go in and... Okay. I'm here and can hear you. Okay. Hello? Okay, can you... We, yes, Rob, can you hear us? I can hear you just fine. Thank you. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you, sir. Okay, go ahead. I understand you want to speak here regarding the 19th Street development. So go ahead, sir. You got the floor. Thank you. Good, good evening, everyone. I was really just here to answer questions. If, if there are any, I think uh, uh, Mr. Childers and um, Ms. Galloway did an excellent job with the introduction. But if there's technical questions about the uh, the TDD or uh, or anything, I'm certainly happy to respond to those. Anyone, any questions? No, I think our city administrator did a very good job explaining it. So we don't have any questions on our ends. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for being coming in tonight by Zoom. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Okay. Well, at that point, um, <clears throat> no more questions, then bill number 3485 would be hold over to a future meeting. At this point, we're going to now move on to bill number 3486. Your Honor, I move we place bill number 3486 on its first reading by title only, please. Okay. <laughs> is there a second? Okay. So the motion is that bill number 3486 on its first reading by title only be be presented, and there was a motion was made by Alderman Snyder. It was signed by Alderman Flores. All in favor of voting this motion to discuss bill number three four eight six, do so by show of hands, and it carries. An ordinance authorizing the city to apply for, accept, and to do all things necessary for a community forestry cost share grant from the Missouri Department of Conservation and amending the budget. Okay, thank you. And I believe yes, Director Sam is back to, to the mic. Okay. I, I still seriously you guys it's been like two months it's okay. never gonna go away this is who I am now after seven okay so um we have some ash trees that are causing problems for us um there's this emerald ash boar bug and I just kind of got a picture on google to kind of show you what it does but essentially attacks ash trees um it has attacked several trees in a couple of our parks. We had a gentleman by the name of John Skinner. He is a federal forester. He is certified, and I put his ID note up there. Um, he has an ISA risk assessment, and he's qualified to do this. So we had him come out to the parks, and we said, hey, we've got some ash borer problems, and we need you to look at these trees. So he looked at um, several trees, and he came up with a list of 24 trees between Grubal Park and Finley River Park that are like totally dead. They're, they're not safe. They need to come down. Um, and, um, 
So we, uh, John, actually started looking for a grant with Missouri Department of Conservation, and we came across a federal forestry grant that is a cost share program. It is a um, 75-25 um, look, but before we get to that, I want to real quick show you guys where the trees are. I didn't know if it mattered, but um, these are, you can see right here, up here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Most of those are blended in with the other ones. This right here is actually technically one tree, but it's so large that they're naming it as four separate trees. All of this property, this right here is all on the AM Society. On September 12th, they were made aware of this. I took them a map, they went over it, and they have sent us a letter of support saying, yes, we understand that the trees need to come down. They're very unsafe. Um, we're worried that it'll cause some sort of injury to either someone in the park or um, if we have another windstorm, it's probably not good. So this is something that's going to have to happen regardless. Um, this is our section of the park. We got lucky number 13 right here is the one on ours that needs to come down. And then these are the ones that are listed on Blue Ball Park. Uh, it's not quite as many, but it's 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And they're just in this cluster right here. So these are the trees that need to come down. Um, this grant offers is a 25, 75-25 uh, cost grant. We have went out to bid to find out how much it costs to take these trees down. It came in at about 29,760. Uh, the Missouri Department of Conservation will give us 22 of it if we are approved for this grant, which is what I'm asking for tonight. I would like to uh, apply. And then if we are awarded, move forward with the grant to take this um, funding for it. In this process, um, we also have to do a budget amendment because it is a reimbursement grant. I will remind you that they're going to have to come down regardless if we get this grant or not. The trees are still going to have to come down and we're going to move forward with it. So it's going to have to be in there either way. The budget amendment is going to have to be done. So there is an appropriation in the parks uh, maintenance fund to take care of this 29000 in case we are not awarded this grant. Um, we're bringing it forward tonight as an ordinance to ex to bring it to you to apply for it and to accept it because there is another city that is applying for this grant. And basically the first one to the table with their documentation is more than likely going to receive the fund and the other will not receive the funding. So for timeline purposes, we're bringing the budget amendment and the award and um, acceptance of it so that if we are awarded it, we can go ahead and move forward with it and get that on the books. So. Any questions? questions? Okay, yes, Alderman Hutcherson. Are these all of the ash trees? I don't think it is all of the ash trees. There's there's some that aren't there. Um, okay, that so are not the dust. city had them inoculated. We have three, and we've been told that we have to have them inoculated every other year to protect them. Otherwise, they're inevitably going to get it. And that's something we're working on for next year's budget is to look at how much that is to redo that. As a part of this grant, we'll need to put some trees back as well, which I think is a great opportunity to do that. So we'll definitely so look at inoculating them and, and trying to move forward with it. So this is a great ash trees that mm -hmm. are in the public land will mm -hmm. be protected. Okay. That That is our intent is to start looking at how we can protect those trees because there are still some left. On Snyder. Yeah, this is a very invasive creature, if I'm not mistaken, this particular insect, and they it kill is. a lot of trees. Uh, when we remove these, is there any type of a plan put in place to replace these trees? with anything. <clears throat> so the grant doesn't specifically call out how much you have to do. We'll just look at what's going to work best with repairing the corridor and in that area. So we'll look at trying to replace some trees. We planted, John, I can't remember how many trees we just get from like 150. We just did a planting of 150 trees. So we're definitely replacing them at a higher rate than we're um, taking them down. So gotcha. I definitely agree with that. I did some homework on this as well. And I've spoken to uh, several folks within the forestry division, and it's a very invasive species. And just like uh, uh, Ms. Jean Ann Hutchinson said over there, the trees have to be treated. Mm -hmm. So if there's any way that we could uh, administer any type of a precursor to uh, prevent this on the existing trees that we have, I think it would be beneficial to do so. But uh, I, I agree that we definitely need to do something with the ones that have been infected. Yep. And um, not that you have deliberately asked, but there is the window to, to do this is from November until April because of the bats. The bats can't come there. So that's the only window that we're allowed to remove these trees, which is why we're on this specific timeline that we're on right now. It's, we're, we're dodging a lot of things and one of them is bats. So yeah, I saw that in the report had to ask her, really? Goes, you what does this have to do with bats? And I was like, well, we don't <laughs> need any bats in our trees. Yes. Okay. Oh, yes, ma'am. Alder, okay, with Alder, 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 excuse me. 
Hey, Sam. Yes. I, I couldn't tell from the pictures. Are the trees already dead or are they leafy and they just know they're infested? No, they're, they're dead, ma'am. Oh, they're dead. Okay. I couldn't tell from the picture. So the public won't be surprised we're cutting a bunch of trees down. Well, well, we'll make sure that we publicize what it is that we're doing. And it's actually a great opportunity to talk about some education in terms of other citizens. Um, I've had multiple conversations with people up and down the river, especially on 4th Street, that are concerned about their ash borer. So we're working with the Environmental Division to do some sort of education piece on trying to inoculate those trees as well for on, on private property. Great. Sounds good. Thank you. Oh, my God, I, want, I wanted to thank you. and the administration for continuing a tradition, which is appropriate for a town that doesn't have a tax base sufficient really to support all of government, its government does. And that is the administration is seeking grants. And this is a, a bug that's affecting all sorts of communities. But I heard you say one other community is going for the grant. And I think that is, uh, says something about a scrappy and thrifty administration. So thank you for this proposal. Okay, and come back. I'll... Just one other question is, I noticed in the documents that the grant will just pay for the cost of taking them down, but our staff will have to grind the stumps and remove the roots. So when we wrote the grant, we actually had to, I, I dedicated two staff to it, and there was a formula in there that we, we will do it, but they are reimbursing that cost to us. So that's worked into the grant um, our, that, as we've done that. So that's something that they reimburse us for. So, And then, um, so we'll have an ongoing expense to inoculate these trees. Mm -hmm. That will be like every other year or stagger them so it's every year. It's not inexpensive so it's, no, it is not inexpensive no. <laughs> so how is that going to work with, I guess we'll find out later how that's going to work in your budget or in the park budget. it'll just be part of the park maintenance that it'll, it'll just be wrapped in there with it okay. in uh, the alderman okay at this time is anyone here from the public who wishes to speak in favor of bill number three four eight six no movement. Anyone here opposed to bill number 3486? As for Alderman, are we all good with questions? Okay, I'm not seeing any movement. So therefore, um, bill number 3486 will be held over to a future next meeting. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna move to a resolution. This is resolution number number 1991. Your Honor, move that we read resolution one not one by title only. And a second. second. Okay. Okay. Resolution number one nine nine one uh by title only. The motion was made by Alderman Galloway, second by Alderman Flores. All in favor of voting on motion to discuss resolution one nine nine one, do so by show of hands. Okay. And it carries. A resolution by the Board of Aldermen of the City of Ozark, Missouri, affirming the intent of the city to acquire the Spring Valley water system from Missouri American Water. Okay, I understand that our city administrators will be speaking on this. Yes, I know it's plain this to you. And if you have any technical questions, uh, Jeremy is not in the audience, and uh, we also have some maps and it goes along with the resolution. But um, as you can tell, the city of Ozark takes its infrastructure very seriously. Certainly water is one of those infrastructures. Over the last decade, we've invested significant uh, resources into improving our water towers uh, and um, improving our water mains, as well as taking close attention to the levels of our aquifers and working with our neighbors. Um, that is the area that we serve. We call that the urban service area. And within there, uh, water is a very important resource. Well, uh, you may or may not know that within that urban service area lies a, another small system that is owned by uh, an outside utility company called American Water. We have been working with American Water for decades, I guess, for, for quite some time. And um, if... Uh, that that is located basically um, just north and northwest of 14th Street. 
um, in that area. You may uh, know the area where uh, uh, Creative Audio has built their building and so forth. When we built that building, um, when we didn't, when we were working with the developer to build that building, uh, you recall that a water main had to be extended underneath Highway 65. Um, that was actually a water main that was owned by American Water. And there was a master meter that was placed there for that to be able to be served um, to the rest of the, the small area we're talking about in the valley. Um, through various conversations with them, um, it has come to their attention as well as ours that trying to operate this very small independent system within a much larger system such as ours in the middle of Ozark, it just doesn't make economic sense. So um, in them approaching us, we have worked with them as well to uh, go through the process. They have uh, worked with their appraisers to identify a value of what this would be worth. And you can see within the resolution that uh, the next step is that they sent us a letter, which you'll see in your packet, saying here is a letter of intent to sell. And they are simply saying that the next step is for you to remit a letter to us saying here is a letter of intent that you would like to purchase. Um, this will really fill in a very significant gap for us. It will allow our public works department to improve the water service for the customers that are out there. And not only that, it will also give us an opportunity to advance economic development that is very interested in building in that area. So I think this is a win-win for everybody, not just us, but also American Water. Um, they've been great to work with, and we're just trying to move it to the next step. Um, and if you have any questions, um, if I can't answer them again, I'm going to point to our public works director because he most likely can. So. Okay. Any, all of us, any questions? I'm. No, okay. Okay. Uh, we'll move now to the public. Is anyone here from the public who should speak for resolution 1991? Or oppose. Okay, I'm not seeing any at all. And plus, also in the discussion with this with our city administrator, because basically my understanding is they approached us about us purchasing it. It's not a question that we went after. They asked us, we purchased it. So therefore, the, I think there's 93 customers. So yeah, okay. yep. that is correct. Okay. Well, if not, um, entertain a motion. Your Honor, I move that we adopt resolution number 1991. And we have second. second. Okay. Okay. The motion is that we adopt resolution number number one nine nine one. It was made by Alderman Galloway and second by Alderman Flores. All in favor of voting on this motion to approve resolution number one nine nine one, do so by a show of hands. And it carries. Okay. Bless you. Moving on. Now now we're gonna be moving on to our second reading final passage of these following bills, which means therefore these are they're closed to public discussion. It's for board members only. Our first one we're going to look at is bill number 3479. Oh, you have to make the motion. He's not here. Your Honor, I move that we place bill number 3479 on its second reading by title only. Okay. And seconded by. Okay. Okay. So bill number 3479 on second reading by title only. Motion was made by Alderman Galloway, second by Alderman Hutcherson. All in favor to discuss this motion, bill number 3479, do by show of hands. And it carries. An ordinance amending the zoning code and official map by changing the zoning classification of certain real property, generally known as a parcel approximately 0. 0.86 acres at 817 North 4th Street. Okay. Uh, Director Cameron Smith. Nothing to add. Nothing to add. Okay. Uh, Alderman, any questions that you want to address that didn't make an answer in the last meeting? Okay, I am not seeing any movement. Okay. Um, Alderman Galloway? Okay. Oh, I was just going to... to... I was just going to speak on it. Oh, oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead, please, sir. Sorry about that. I, I just wanted to explain my vote, and I think I've heard the arguments, so it's not like I'm not interested in 
listening to either side. I, I've just listened to uh, both sides. Um, <clears throat> but uh, people attend, uh, they're interested. And I think, you know, it's helpful maybe to understand um, how these things can be construed, at least by me. Um, <clears throat> I'm looking at a definition of land use, and that's what a zoning ordinance change request is um, and what the purpose is. And the goal is to confine certain uses uh, to uh, designated areas without imposing undue burdens on individual property owners. This, I think, doesn't, really. And that's why I support it. Okay, anyone else? Okay, if not, um, since in all, all in place. Your Honor, I move that we adopt bill number 3479 as ordinance number 23-067. Is there a second? Okay. Okay. The motion is to adopt bill number 3479 to become ordinance number 23-067. Motion was made by Alderman Galloway, same with Alderman Hutcherson. Roll call, please. Alderman Snyder? Aye. Alderman Flores? Aye. Alderman Nolan is absent. Alderman Hutchinson? Aye. Alderman Alder? Aye. Thank you. Alderman Galloway? Aye. We have five high votes. Motion carries. Thank you. Now we'll move on to bill number 3480. Your Honor, I move that we place number or bill number 3480 on a second reading by title only. Okay. And seconded by. Okay. I think I saw your hand first. Okay. okay. So bill number 3480 uh, on second reading by title only. Motion was made by Alderman Galloway. Is segment all in favor to voting on the motion to discuss bill number 3480? Do so by show of hands. And it carries. An ordinance amending the zoning code and official map by changing the zoning classification of certain real property, generally known as a parcel approximately 14.35 acres at 716 North 14th Street. Okay. This time, Director Cameron Smith, let's come back to the mic. Yeah, so we have to answer questions, but I did want to give you an update on the petition that you received at the last meeting. Uh, staff has evaluated that petition signatures. In review of that, 15.06 acres of area landowners within the 185 feet okay. uh, was reflected in the signatures, which did fall short of the 30% of the requirement. I can't hear very well. Okay. He's very muffled. I can't hear what he's saying. All right. Sorry, the mic was turned off. Oh, I thank you. <laughs> okay. I thought maybe it was me. <laughs> in review of the uh, the signed petition, staff did evaluate those signatures. Uh, in review, 15.06% of the area landowners in size within 185 feet uh, had signed this petition. Uh, as a result, that did not meet the minimum 30% threshold that does require a two-thirds majority vote by the board. In addition, staff did provide the, the board an email from correspondence from Mr. Price, the representative, where staff had requested some additional information. Uh, he did provide some uh, clarification that, that in providing that petition was really the intent of letting the, the residents be heard of, in opposition that wasn't able to attend. It was not for the intention of getting that two-thirds requirement. Uh, but with that, be happy to answer any questions that you guys might have. Any questions for Director Cameron? I am not seeing from anyone. So this time, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, I just had a couple of questions. Yes. One is that I know that the um, potential developer has said that he was going to do townhomes instead of um, multi or multifamily. Um, block buildings. And I guess my question is, he said 10, does that mean a total of 10 townhomes or is that 
10 buildings with a multitude of townhomes in them. I didn't see that specified. If, if the applicant is here, he might better clarify, but I'm reading the conditional uses or conditional, sorry, the conditional overlays, it says reduced units per building to no more than 10. So I interpret that to 10 units per building, not, not a total number of buildings, but within one building up to 10 units. Okay, and then, then in the, um, the R4 code that I see, it says such district will allow the construction of five or more buildings. So there will be a minimum of five buildings. So that would be 50 units, correct? At a minimum, yes. I think they did clarify possibly more than that at the last meeting, but you'd have to clarify that with them. Yes. Okay, and then I have another question that's kind of a what if question. So if it were rezoned and the developer that has any intent of developing once the conditions are all put out and he goes through all the process that planning and development requires, he decides that he does not have the investment or does not wish to spend the money developing that do the restrictions upon that, uh, those conditions, and you said a conditional use, will that, if you should sell that land, will that carry forward or will it just be open to anything on form? Yeah, if it is approved with conditions placed on that, that would be carried with the land, not the owner. So the next developer okay. would have to follow those same conditions. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyone else, all of questions? I'm not seeing. Okay. Entertain a motion. Oh, you, okay. Yes, sir. This is strictly for comment more than anything. Um, I respect the fact that there's a, a land owner that wants to, you know, sell the property. I respect that. But what I do have an understanding is the will of the people that live in that neighborhood. And they showed up in force, and I applaud you folks for that. Uh, you spoke, your voices were heard. Uh, you had very valid points. And I, I agree with you. I do not believe that is a hillside for multifamily housing. I do think that the uh, the point was made that if it were residential, there could be there could be some possibilities there. But there are so many impacts that will come with any type of a multifamily complex there. And it goes beyond the roads, the water, the electric. It goes to the impact that it's going to have in that area as a whole. Emergency services are going to be heavily impacted. Schools are going to be inundated with more children that they're having a problem with now trying to get them you know, a good education. I just do not believe multifamily housing in that particular area is a good thing. But with respect to the petition, your voices were heard. And I want you to understand your voices were heard up here. And it's nothing to be mean with anyone in here, but I have to agree with the people that have a vested interest with their homes there. I do understand what they're saying. And if there can be some type of a uh, an agreement that can come between you and maybe these other folks to, to you know accommodate some single family housing. I think they're open to that. But uh, there, there was apparently some, some harsh words exchanged uh, between the developer with these folks. And uh, I believe the implication was made that there will be a large number of houses built there. And I don't think that was very fair for these folks at all. And no ma'am, hold on just one moment. This, I'm not, just please let me finish here. This is what I was told. And uh, I just, I think that was wrong for that, that particular individual to, to say something like that to these folks when they were just trying to express their interest. And I'm not here to argue with you. I'm just telling you this is, this is what I've heard. But uh, I applaud your efforts in trying to develop a piece of property. But I also applaud their efforts on sticking up for their living standards there. Okay, yeah. Anyone else from the Alderman? Okay, yes, ma'am, Alder, Alder, yes. Listening to the citizens' concerns at the last meeting to rezone the 14 acres, this is what I heard. Rezoning to R4 high-density multifamily would increase noise, light pollution, loss of privacy, 
increase flooding concerns, put a strain on existing infrastructure, increase traffic, making it unsafe for pedestrians, unsafe for entry and exit on Jackson Street, affect negatively the quiet, well-established neighborhood and destroy the historical natural beauty and the impact the quality and impact the quality of life for those current residents. And I agree with all that. And so therefore I will vote no on this bill. Thank you, ma'am. Alderman Galloway. Yeah, on this one as well, I, I think it's important to just explain a vote. You know, for the analysis in the first one, uh, the, why I voted in favor of that owner's request is nobody was burdened. The uh, owner obviously wanted the the change, and that nobody would have been adversely affected by that request. Um, that's also there are also situations where are there are competing interests between <clears throat> between owners. You do have the right to private enjoyment of your land. There is nothing wrong with wanting to make money from your land. Uh, 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 that's what many people do. Um, <clears throat> but I think the thing is, is that if you deny the request, put a burden on the private owner, but similarly, if you approve the request, plentiful comments, that other people that own land around it felt burdened. So then you kind of go to, well, why do we have these land use rules? Why do we sit here and and, and uh, judge them? And we have to judge them. I mean, we're not legislating, we have to apply the law. Um, and that's because people are burdened one way or another, however the spoke goes. The factors uh, that I looked at, um, was uh, mainly, I'm gonna say the plan wrong, not the master plan. What is the plan? Comprehensive, comprehensive plan. 2019. The comprehensive plan, um, <clears throat> it sets yeah. out and it's recognized by the courts as a, uh, sorry, the, the comprehensive plan sets out proposed uses over a 10 year period for different land. It's actually approved by the Board of Aldermen. And it's done, it was done by a consultancy that did a good job of reaching out to different members of the public to get their input when they uh, uh, gave the proposal to us and we discussed it and approved it. Uh, we're entitled to rely on that plan um, as a board. Um, and that plan uh, did not contemplate multifamily. And uh, that is a factor um, I weighed heavily. Um, the uh, other thing that I that I looked at was, you know, is this transitional? I mean, I uh, I did listen to uh, staff's uh, thoughts on it that it's not transitional, but I think what I heard was, you know, it's going to be next to a transitional area at some point along Jackson. Uh, the, if you travel out to that neighborhood, um, that topography, uh, just the way it is, it's, it's really not visible from the highway. It's really not visible from Jackson. It really just kind of belongs with the other houses there, the topography that's being proposed to develop. Um, and so uh, to me, I, I didn't see anything there that was persuasive enough to me to overcome uh, what the comprehensive plan had uh, suggested. Um, <clears throat> and the other thing is uh, if you go to the streets there, we can't require developers to put sidewalks elsewhere. They can put it in front of their property there's no sidewalks there. There's gonna be an added burden uh, of traffic for multifamily. Um, and if you talk about also emergency services and so on, it just seemed like uh, there were going to be some safety factors there also considering topography, uh, a pretty 
pretty obvious uh, to me. Um, <clears throat> so those were the three characteristics of what was presented to me and, and why, uh, uh, how I was balancing the laws that we enacted to apply them to, to this particular proposal. Persuasively, it does matter to me that the Planning and Zoning Board voted unanimously, I think, uh, uh, to uh, recommend against this. I'm not bound by that, but I, I do honor volunteers and I do value their deliberative processes. Uh, and those people are people that really do care about their results. Um, and they have at times gone against uh, public uh, input or the, the majority of public input. Uh, so that also was helped persuade me. But again, these other issues are what I kind of hang my hat on uh, in uh, uh, voting or, or in my upcoming vote, which is to vote against it. Um, I don't think that anybody's a bad person for doing, saying whatever they've said in support of their positions. It's just this, somebody is burdening somebody's land, the people around burdening the owner, the owner burdening the others. We have to weigh it out. And how I weighed it is following the law, uh, was on uh, the side of voting against this. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Flores. Um, the comments I wanted to make on this was, and not to rehash what other aldermen have said, but as far as transitional goes, I, I feel it being surrounded by as much single family as it is. And when you look at this and the way things are laid out, the way that it's zoned currently, makes more sense to me than, than, than transitioning to uh, the R4. I, I do feel like it being surrounded by multifamily and, and not large neighborhoods, this actually seems to be a centerpiece to everything around it. And so the rezoning to me would, would, uh, would not make a whole lot of sense for where it's at. And uh, if it was new property coming in, it was, wasn't annexed already and it wasn't already zoned, and if it was something larger that was outside of this area, even if it was up to it, I, I, you know, that might be a little bit different of a scenario, but that's why I'll be voting against this is because of uh, its proximity to where it's at, really, its location is my, my main thing. I think we're ready for a vote. <clears throat> Your Honor, I move that we enact bill number 3480 as ordinance number 23-068. Is there a second? Second. Okay. 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 The motion is that we enact bill number 3480 to become ordinance number 23-068. The motion was made by Alderman Galloway. It was seconded by Alderman Flores. Roll call, please. Alderman Hutchinson? Alderman Galloway? Nay. Alderman Flores? Nay. Alderman Owen is absent. Alderman Alder? Nay. Alderman Snyder? Nay. We have five nay votes. Motion fails. Thank you very much. We'll now be moving on to the next bill, bill number three, four. Eight one. Your Honor, I move that we place bill number 3481 on its second reading by title only. And second by. Okay. Okay. So bill number 3481 on, on second reading by title only. Motion was made by Alderman Galloway, second by Alderman Snyder. All in favor of voting to discuss bill number 3481, do by show of hands. And it carries. An ordinance amending the municipal code of the city of Ozark, Missouri, section 21080, dog bites regarding holding dogs at the animal control facility for observation. Okay, uh, this time, do we have any staff comments? Are, is Lieutenant Deutscher, are you speaking for the chief or? If you have any questions, try to 
Okay. Do we have any questions from any of the aldermen regarding this bill? Okay, I am not seeing any. Okay, I think we're good to go on. Your Honor, I move that we enact bill number 3481 as ordinance number 23-069. And seconded by, got it. Okay, so bill number 3481 is going to enact become ordinance number 23-069. The motion was made by Alderman Galloway. It was seconded by Alderman Hutcherson. Roll call, please. It will be 068. Oh, I missed. Because the last bill failed to be adopted. So we'll use oh, that number. That's that makes sense. I apologize. You're right. It didn't pass. Okay. Thank you. Very well. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to clarify that. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, bill number 3481 will come to orders number 23-068. Motion was made by Alderman Galloway, second by Alderman Hutcherson. Thank you. Alderman Owen is absent. Alderman Alder? Aye. Alder, Alderman Hutchinson? Alderman Snyder? Aye. Alderman Galloway? Aye. Alderman Flores? Aye. We have five aye votes. Motion carries. Thank you. Now we'll move on to our next one, which is bill number 3482. Your Honor, I move that we place bill number 3482 on its second reading by title only. And seconded by. Okay. Okay. Bill number 3482 on second reading by title only. Motion was made by Alton Galloway. It was second by Alton Flores. All in favor of voting to discuss bill number 3482, do by show of hands. And it carries. An ordinance amending the municipal code of the city of Ozark, Missouri, section 21070, release of dogs to owner, and adding one new fee to the 2023 fee study. Okay. <clears throat> Again, do we have any? Questions for Lieutenant Deutscher regarding bill number 3482 from the Alderman. Because he really wants to answer some questions, I know. <laughs> I'm good. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm not seeing anyone, so go on. Your Honor, I move that we enact bill number 3482 as ordinance number 23-069. Okay. 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 So the motion is to enact bill number 3482 to become ordinance number 23-069. Motion was made by Alderman Galloway. It was second by Alderman Flores. So roll call, please. Alderman Snyder? Aye. Alderman Galloway? Aye. Alderman Alder? Aye. Alderman Hutchinson? Aye. Alderman Owen is absent. Alderman Flores? Aye. We have five aye votes. Motion carries. Thank you all very much. Now we move to reports uh, from our city administrator, Steve Childers. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I don't have anything new to add. I guess I will say that before our next meeting, uh, just to say today, on the 14th, I think there's an October fest coming up. Uh, <laughs> I missed that by about two months last time. Uh, yeah, so uh, that, that, that's going to be good. I hope everybody can go to that um, and, uh, and enjoy themselves. So, uh, and craft fair this week? The craft uh, fair. Yeah, I love the tents. They're in the park. Uh, <laughs> they put up my new Yeah, I love craft fair this weekend, yes, yeah. on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It should actually feel like fall. Okay, I'm gonna do a plug since you talk about the craft fair. Um, also on Saturday, the 7th of October from 7 to 11 a.m., the Kiwanis Club Christian County is having their annual pancake and silent auction at the First Baptist Church here in Ozark. Not that I'm a member, but <laughs> if you wish to support that, because all our money does help kids here in Christian County. So, okay, I do my plug. Alderman's, any question? final comments. Okay. And not entertain a motion adjournment. Move to adjourn. Second. Okay. Okay. The motion is to, to adjourn. Motion made by Alderman Galloway. Second by Alderman Alder. On favor of voting on this motion to adjourn. Do so by show of hands. 
and it carries. Thank you all for your time tonight. Everybody stay healthy. Yes.